coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Arizona Cardinals. Fielded about a yard deep. Oh, spinning away. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The first carry now. This is Johnson. And he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one. And it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. the play fake. Here's Palmer. He's got time. Still back there. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here. He throws it away. And now it's third. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. They go play action now. Palmer. And he's got Fitzgerald. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Well, there's the first time in this game that Carson Palmer finds Larry Fitzgerald. Likely won't be the last, but how about the way these two have helped each other's careers? Yeah, they really have. It's hard to believe with Fitzgerald, but really both of these guys, how long they've been in the league now. But Fitzgerald, gosh, third overall pick back in 04. Yeah, how about that? And remember, Carson Palmer, a former Heisman Trophy winner, he's finally found a real home in Arizona. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Have you talked with your friends who are in the fantasy leagues? I keep hearing David Johnson's name is coming up in a big way. Boy, he was a steal third rounder out of Northern Iowa. And I think last year started as a fourth string back, didn't he? He, he certainly did, but boy, he produces the year one honor. Remember, he can run it, he can catch it. He was a wide receiver at Northern Iowa before he became a running back and also has great kick return ability. Ran one back for a touchdown in 2015. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. They'll try and run for it. Here's Johnson. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. First down carry here for Johnson. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Now they'll throw it with Palmer. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. Give him two yards on that play, and that'll lead here to a third down. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball, and sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. On third down, Palmer looking for his running back, and he's got it. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Now the punter, Ryan Quigley, is on in his fourth season out of Boston College. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from two... And look here, it's an opening drive fake. And he will not even make it back to the line of scrimmage. A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool him. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. 
anytime a fake doesn't work, we usually focus our attention on the guys that were unsuccessful. But how about the defensive guys? They have to plan all week. They have to prepare all week. Special teams, it looked like they were educated for that one. Educated on their toes and getting a big stop. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael, calling a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. For Kristen Michael, his fifth year in the league, first four years, a total of 497 yards, but now getting a chance in Seattle, 354 through six weeks. I love what he said about the whole thing, about how he had to wake up and realize what he needed to do in his career, and he rededicated himself this year with a second opportunity in Seattle, and boy, it's paying off not just for him, but for the Seahawks. And he added two scores to go along with 64 yards in their game against the Falcons in Week 6. On second down, Wilson throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Kristen Michael was the intended receiver, and it's third down. Offense faces a third and medium with six yards left. On third down, Wilson. And that is incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. And it brings up fourth down. So on now is the 11-year man, John Ryan, to put it away. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And out of bounds. Sailed over. Looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four. Turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. <laughs> they didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines? The head coach? Get ready. That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold but he up. he trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. And some options here for the offense on second and two. Now Palmer to throw on second down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Larry Fitzgerald was the intended target, and it's third and short. And they're just a couple of yards shy of a first down here on third down. Gives to Johnson, and they're going to get the first down here as he's up to the 14. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 11, he goes down. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Partner, we're into the second quarter, and I guess you can kind of look at it both ways. The offense, they've got to figure out what they're going to do because they haven't scored any points. But if you're the defense, you're feeling great about what you've got going on. The only concern you have, if you get to the half, what adjustments will the offense make to try to defeat you? Throwing his Palmer. Caught on the left side, Fitzgerald. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third down. Anytime you call man coverage against Larry Fitzgerald, you're really holding your breath as a defensive guy because his ability to run such precise routes and use that big frame that he has, that body against you, 
it, it's going to be very difficult to break passes up against him. Yeah, when you make nine Pro Bowls in your first 12 years, you might want to give him a little bit more covers than that. Yeah, it's not just athletic ability. He's a thinking man's receiver as well. That one was intended for John Brown, and it's now fourth and three. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Returnable for Lockett. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they'll be looking to avoid what happened last time, which is punting the football. But when you look at how teams play the game, that complimentary football comes into play. How do I take care of my defense? How do I take care of my offense? Well, the defense is taking care of them in a lot of ways. Now it's time for the offense to jump things up and help their defense out. Give them a little bit of rest. Yeah, time, time for them to give them a rest. Took the words right out of my mouth. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Pardon me, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Second down following the run. Again with Michael. So second down was a run play. Now let's see what they do on third. Wilson now to throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse, And it's fourth and three. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Ellington now to return it. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And the Cards will take over, first and 10. Here's the Arizona offense now as they get set to take over. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. You know, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Screenplay, Johnson. Oh, a heck of a move. Oh, man. Oh, another beautiful move. Man, that's better than the two-step, isn't it? They'll get 19 yards there, and the Cards are going to have a first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Throwing now, Palmer on first down, surveying the field. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Michael Floyd. Partner, let's revisit the NFC East for a second. We talked about this last week, about how good that division is. But what about the Cowboys now 5-1? and one. Can anybody catch them? I don't think that they're out of reach, but I can't believe they were actually talking about Dallas at the top of the list right now because let's go back to the offseason. So many losses, and then Tony Romo gets hurt in preseason. Who saw Dak Prescott doing what he's doing? and the defense playing as well as it is. Yeah, Washington 4-2, but it's Dallas has already it's beaten it's them head-to-head. -head. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. And the offense moving quickly to the line. On first down, it's Palmer. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. K.J. Wright, the outside linebacker, drops him for a loss of six. On second down, Palmer. 
Under pressure, and they got to him again. K.J. Wright in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. Let's go, let's go. Two, 58. Two, 58. Third and long. And that is incomplete. Down to 15 seconds now. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On presumably to punt, though he did complete a pass earlier. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. And you got to think, if this is anything other than just taking a knee, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, they've got enough to talk about at the half. Why do anything else? Just get out of there. And the window closes quickly. He'll only get up to the 22-yard line. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. As we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Fielded about a yard deep. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. There are zero points on the scoreboard for either side. It'll be interesting to see what adjustments were made. The defenses have obviously been great. So if you like defense, this is a classic game. This is what you're looking for. But now you're trying to figure out how to gain any type of an advantage on offense. Is it through a big chunk play that they haven't seen before? Or is it just running your regular offense and running it better, trying to create an opportunity? We'll see which avenue they choose to go down. Face mask penalty, and Charles, you were a defender. You know sometimes in the heat of the moment, it's hard to keep your hands away from that face mask. Sometimes you just get out of position as a defender when you're trying to make a tackle, so you end up flailing away, and your hand gets into the wrong spot. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Doug Baldwin, 41 yards. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. Well, that was the fly route for a touchdown. And since he caught that one and scored it, I got to tell the story. Before the game, we were standing there. He was running deep routes, dropped one. It bounced up and just hit me right in the gut. And I said, come on, man. But there, there was no drop. Yeah, you okay now? I'm good. All right, I'm good. good. We got the ice pack up here. You're, you're just fine. What I loved about it was the subtlety of the route because everyone knows he's fast. They're going to play him for that route first and foremost. But sometimes it's a head fake. It's varying your speed off the line of scrimmage. It's giving the defensive back different angles to think about. Is he going inside? Is he going outside? And then, as you noted, he just took off past it. Oops, there he goes again. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. This fielded at the two. up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. 
other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. We'll see what they have up their sleeve. It's a pickup of 14 there. And it's good enough for an Arizona first. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Fells has it, left side. Call it a gain of five, and that'll bring up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Right now, one, 18. On second down, here's Palmer. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Every time I see a hitch pattern dropped, I go back to the combine because there's a drill that they use all the time that's called the gauntlet drill where a receiver catches the ball and just works his way straight down the line and catches it from different sides. And the problem with that drill is that you don't actually have to secure the catch. You just kind of catch it, drop it immediately, and keep moving. And sometimes that shows up on plays like this. It's brought in by Floyd. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Dumping it off for Johnson. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine, and it'll be second and about a yard to go for the first. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. Get ready. One, eight, two. They go play action now. Palmer. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Cassius Marsh. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more than a foot or so wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. Big stop, Keith. Big stop. Let's go. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him six on the play, and that'll make it a second down. And good to see Jimmy back out there moving okay after the ruptured patel in week 12 last year. You've dealt with that injury, haven't you? I have, and uh, let me tell you, you know that expression, I feel feel your pain? I felt Jimmy's when it, when it happened. Now, mine didn't happen quite the same way his did. His happened in the line of duty. He was playing in a game. For me, I was just coaching. <laughs> and went up to try and catch a pass. Poof. I think for me, it was just mainly age. For him, he was actually playing. But good to see him back out there healthy. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, 
comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. Fresh set of downs here. Now a play fake here on first down. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. But pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides, where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? They'll run it now, out of the gun. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage, it'll be back at the 36. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They go play action with Wilson. Backing up. And that is incomplete. Very difficult night for the guys on offense. They've got to be looking at each other in the huddle and on the sidelines. How are we going to find some open space to complete a pass and find open room to run? This defense all night long has squeezed down the passing lanes, made plays on the football. It's really been a thing of beauty for them. He's got to figure all day long prepping for the game. They had to have talked about it again and again. Squeeze passing lanes and we'll be in great shape. So a big one there is that gives them a little cushion. And you know, here in the fourth quarter, the fact that they were able to bleed some time off the clock and put points on the board, even if it's only three, that could turn out to be the drive that ultimately wins them the game. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And the Cardinals offense here ready to take over. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there, we've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, they haven't had a whole lot of success in the passing game here. Now in the second half, he's thinking, I guess maybe just take a shot deep. I think you're right. Almost looking for a bailout, isn't he? Can my receiver go up and make a big play for me? Can I create a penalty downfield? Maybe pick up an interference call and get that yardage downfield? Anything trying to get going again, but you're right. He definitely took a shot. Now Palmer to throw. That is incomplete. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. On third down, Palmer. He's got time in the pocket. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good. But when you can couple that with contact on him, that leads to an incompletion as we just saw there. That's winning football. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Get ready. Here we go. It's Palmer on fourth down. And that is incomplete. The Cardinals unable to convert there on fourth down. And the Seahawks, they'll get the football back 
in outstanding field position. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. This complete to lock it. And he's brought down. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. They'll come out in the pistol. So second and goal here from the nine. On the ground, it's Michael. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Just keep the ball on the ground. Do a little pounding. Chew up some clock. If they can get it in, that might be enough to get them home. And if not, the clock is definitely their friend. carry for the former Clemson Tigers, C.J. Spiller. And yeah, now here's a timeout defensively coming from the Cardinals. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Hauschka's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they settle for just the three there, but clearly anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. Now after the made field goal, Hauschka back out onto the field to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's all the way up across the 40. And down at the 42-yard line. Great return. So out now come the Cardinals. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three. But this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Let's go, let's go. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what happened. You think there. that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. The Cardinals offense now works their way back onto the field. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. Let's see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. 
And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. And Gresham's got it over the middle. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. And quickly, they get to the line. Now Palmer to throw on second down. This will be caught at about the six. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Out of the gun, Palmer. That's caught at the three. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Give him three on the play, and that'll make it second and goal. To throw again, it's Palmer. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And there's the touchdown that they needed. So they'll celebrate. But the guys on the sidelines, they've got to stay focused. The onside kick team, they need them to get the ball back. Yeah, part one of the equation done. Now they need to convert and get that onside kick. And that'll make it 13-7. Time definitely of the essence now. Just under a minute to play, and here we go. And this is going to be taken in by the Seahawks. And it would appear they're on their way to victory now. Uh, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time. <laughs> oh, no, he lost the football. And this is recovered by the Cardinals. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. Didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. They'll look to throw. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. It's incomplete. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Here we go. Blue 58. He's back to throw. And he's got Fitzgerald. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. down following that long game. Back to throw. And this is caught on the left side, Jerron Brown. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside.
They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. He'll look to throw. Finding time. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. I see an extra defensive back on the field. Little surprise here on third and one. Palmer to throw. He gets it to Brown. Good play. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. One last shot for Palmer. He's got time. And this is incomplete. So no miracles here on the final play. And this ball game is over. Well, Charles, an absolutely thrilling finish there at the end, down to the final play. Got it close to the goal line, but couldn't punch it in. How much fun was that ending, though, for us? We were right? standing up. I had to. You had to get out of your seat for that one. That close to the goal line? Oh, that was fun.